Downwind. Cessna over the threshold, coming up on the white dot, Adderby on the white dot, left turn first available. I got a high wind coming up on about a half mile final, clear to land Adderby on. Traffic on the left face, you're following the Cessna down, low off your left. Square it up just a little bit, and then we're going to get you in. Start your descent, though. Start your descent on the base. Traffic on final, give me follow on base. Base traffic, start turning toward the numbers now. High wing coming up on quarter mile final, take it all the way down to the green. Cessna taxiing on the green, expedite down to the next hard surface. Get me some speed, there you go, 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 go fast. This is going to be good. I got traffic on a mile final. You're following traffic ahead and to your right. High wing coming up on the threshold. Take it all the way down to the green dot. Stop Charlie Sierra. Two mile final. A mile final. Turn north. Turn north. And we're going to just make you, uh, we're going to bring you back around. Jet traffic's coming up on about a mile and a half final. Runway nine are clear to land. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, let's listen up, guys. If you're on final for runway nine, I want you to offset to the left. I got a jet that's landing on runway nine. The jet's cleared to land runway nine if you can make it. If not, just continue straight ahead. It looks like you're going around for the jet. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we had one right in front of us, sir. Dragger. Let's see. What we got? A tricycle. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tail dragger. Down to the green. Uh, green dot. Then a left turn. Short final here. You click land on nine. All the way to the white dot. Go down to the white dot. Find somebody to follow out here. Canard, just come to the runway, and I might have to just send you around. That'll be fine. And for the jet, you just want to stay in this pattern, or you want to go back out for an instrument approach? Stay in a pattern. Charlie here. All right, just stay with me here for a minute. And my tail dragger, and eh, let's see, over the numbers, go down to the green. And Canard's gonna have to go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. And my uh, high wing here over the runway, keep it airborne, keep it airborne. You do not descend, do not descend. You got a fast guy behind you, do not descend. My, okay, here you go. Keep it airborne, keep it airborne. As soon as the guy behind you gets uh, slowed down, I'm gonna put you down. So keep it airborne. The uh, one that just passed the white dot, make a left turn on the hard surface. All right, my uh, high wing tail dragger, you can put it down now. You can put it down now. And Charlie Sierra, let me get you about a mile off. Let's see, Charlie Sierra, I lost. There you are. Make a left hand turn. I'll try to resequence you here on the down ones. We'll see how it looks. Short final, you're clear to land runway nine on the white dot. Clear to land on the white dot. There you go. And the tricycle left on the hard surface and follow the pikeman. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being part of the show. And let's see, just find somebody to follow out there, uh, follow on the final, and as you get close to the runway, if it's not going to work, we're going to send you around and then try to resequence you. Now, who else got sent around that's not back on the down one? The Canard? Yeah, Canard. All right, Canard, there's a golf stream up there that went around, too. I just lost sight of him, but you're going to make kind of a left-hand turn and stay low. I think Charlie's here once we're out, too. 3,200. Okay, that'll be fine. Just maintain VFR. I don't know what else is up there above you. Probably most everybody's down here. So just make a left-hand turn. We'll try to get, uh, try to get you back here. I think our got the uh, jet inside. Okay, the RV, maybe an RV-10, whatever, you're on final. Keep your speed up and go all the way down to the... Uh, aim for the green dot for me. Uh, actually, keep your speed up. There's a guy behind you. Aim for the green dot, and I'm sure that's plenty of room for you to land on runway 9. You're going to land on runway 9. Number two... You're going to go down to the white dot. Follow the white dot. Actually, you know what? That's 1,500 feet. You're going to land at the white dot. The uh, spacing looks adequate here. Two guys on final. You're kind of tight there. Keep each other in sight. And you're going to uh, aim for the white dot. If it's not going to work, we'll do. Uh, we'll come up with a plan B. We might have to send you around. The second guy behind you out there in about a two-mile final. Are you slow enough to be able to follow that guy in front of you? You need to go around. Well, I probably shouldn't ask that because I had about five guys to answer me. So I should know better than that after 35 years, you would think, right? All right, so uh, let me see. The guy who's number one, it's number one. What kind of airplane is he? An RV type. All right, RV type. Keep it airborne for me. Keep it airborne. And I got a fast guy behind you. The number two guy over the uh, uh, trees there. Go ahead and put it down on the numbers. Put it down on the numbers. My first guy just coming up on the numbers at the, uh, over the grass at the numbers. I want you to keep T minus one minute and counting. Hello. One. Hello. 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 H
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this very special Thursday afternoon, evening, evening, afternoon, Thursday evening live stream. Uh, before we do anything else, let's just thank Sky Demon, our sponsors. Thank you very much, Sky Demon. It wouldn't be possible without you. And if you have not tried Sky Demon, pop over to the uh, Google Play Store, I think it is, or the App Store, download it and give it a go on the 30 day trial, free trial. I can't believe there's that many people who don't know, who haven't tried it yet, but just in case you're one, give it a go. So uh, let me just scroll down to the bit that I should have been on earlier and give you this week's Sky Demon tip. Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a good evening. When I say Sky Demon tip, <laughs> 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 it's the weather. Here's the Sky Demon tip. Hi, I'm Hannah from Sky Demon, and welcome to today's top tip. Once you've planned your route, you can create a briefing pack from the route menu. This can include all of these items, including your pilot log and en route charts, and your weather and note time briefing. You can toggle off any items that you don't want to include in the pack. As you can see, this generates one handy document with all of your route information and briefing. And you can even email yourself a copy if you need to keep it for your records or for printing. For more information about using Skydemon, take a look at our user guide, which you can access from our website. Well, there you go. Skydemon tip, briefing pack, mm. print it out, rest of it. Okay, so I said the welcome to this very special live stream. It's a very special live stream because we're talking to Zara Rutherford, um, the 19-year-old who became the first Belgian to fly around the world, first youngest woman to fly around the world, first Belgian in a khaki flight suit to fly around the world, all those various things. There's only one minor, minor snag at the moment, and that's that currently, for reasons that I'm not sure of, Zara is not actually here. Um, she should be sitting in the green room, and there is no green room propped up here. Um, we didn't yep. have it confirmed with Zara and Sam. Um, I have, I I have been insured via an email from Sam. Don't stress. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. when we, were, we were point out we were we were we got her on to uh, to go first because she's got another prior engagement at eight, I think, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, and that yeah that email was about three minutes ago. So um, okay. Well, I'll tell you what we could do. We could. We were going to. We were going to run the weather at the end of the at the end of the stream um, and fit Zara in. So as Zara's not here at the moment, we'll go to the weather, uh, run the weather, and then hopefully, while the, while it's while it's while the skies are clearing, Zara would appear. So let's let's go to Simon on the weather. Hi everyone, hope you're having a good evening and got some flying planned for the weekend. I think the theme for the weekend is going to be one of cloud. We've got a west southwesterly airflow bringing in moisture off the Atlantic. That's the reason for that cloud. So the forecasts in the top right-hand corner are going to be pretty important. This is the cloud ceiling forecast, height above ground level. Where you see uh, red, we've got heights of less than 500 feet. Where you're seeing orange, it's 500 to 1,000 feet. Yellow is 1,000 to 2,000 feet. And green is cloud ceilings of 2,000 to 4,000 feet. The white means that the ceiling is above 4,000 feet. So this is the forecast then for Friday. Southwesterly flow, you see those warm fronts out towards the west. They're going to be bringing some drizzle to these western coasts and hills of Scotland, also of Wales, perhaps northwest to England as well. Eastern areas tending to be better, the cloud breaking here. And you can see there that the base is forecast to be about two to 4,000 feet, whereas on these western coasts and hills, we're looking at much lower bases, probably at about 1,000 to 2,000 feet and some hill fog there as well. Quite breezy on Friday, some gales affecting western parts of Scotland. Elsewhere, probably looking at uh, west-southwesterlies at the surface, probably uh, at around 15 to 18 knots. Now, on to Saturday, and cold front just moving its way southeastwards through the course of Saturday. This is bringing with it some pretty strong winds. See the isobars close together there. It's not a particularly strong feature. There won't be much left on it. It'll be a band of cloud more than anything else, and perhaps one or two showers, particularly over the higher ground. But the wind will be the main factor, particularly northern England and Scotland. Northwesterly is at around 30 to 35 knots. Looks like some heavy showers as well getting into northwestern Scotland. Blue skies uh, elsewhere. But then across England for Wales as well, pretty breezy, ice bars close together. Northwesterly is 20, perhaps 25 knots. Nothing to worry about cloud base wise, at least away from southern England, where we may have bases of 1,000 to 2,000 feet for a time. I think it's going to be that wind that causes the problems for Saturday. And then for Sunday, low pressure 
west of Ireland on Sunday. More fronts tracking their way northwards and eastwards. Again, this is going to be bringing with it lots of moisture and hence lots of clouds. So I think we're going to be looking at some drizzle affecting southwest England, western coast of Wales, probably running up through parts of northwest England, western Scotland as well. Eastern air is tending to be more flyable here with a base of around two to 4,000 feet. Lighter winds on Sunday as well. But I do think that things will deteriorate from the west as the area of low pressure we see here just moves its way eastwards through the course of the afternoon. So for Sunday flying, I would say morning is probably better than the afternoon. So there is some flying to be found then this weekend. And if you want to build your confidence in being able to predict the weather yourself and, you know, get beyond the weather that you see on the PPL so you can actually understand it, um, then get yourself along to Aviation Weather School. I've just announced my uh, new dates for my next part one school, which is going to be on the mornings of the 12th and the 19th of March from 09.30 to 12.30 hours. Presented live online by me, lucky you. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how to understand the weather better and how you can spot weather windows up to five days in advance and build your confidence in uh, in your flying weather. OK, uh, I'll leave you with that for now. If you want to book your place, go to weatherschool.co.uk. But whatever you're doing, have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy yourselves and I'll see you soon. Have a good evening, guys. Bye for now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> world, magic. world record holder yes that's right yeah i'm very excited <laughs> oh, it's kind yeah. of strange actually yeah yeah well thank you for joining us and f funny enough somebody just mentioned in the comments that according to the new york times you're the youngest woman to solo circumnavigate the globe great well that's a bonus isn't it <laughs> <laughs> i brilliant. think i don't know if yeah i haven't heard of it's just circumnavigating solo i'm not sure what that means but yeah I think I guess that's via any mode of transport, yeah. foot, boat, well, cycling. Yeah, cycling. Yeah, I haven't looked yeah. into that. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, yeah. Thanks. For, thanks for joining us. Um, I know you're you're kind of pushed for time, so we'll we'll crack on and um, and and have a chat. So, first thing I want to know was when you got back and you landed and you got home. What was the first thing you did? <laughs> So obviously said, I said hello to the parents <laughs> and then there was this, um, this sandwich. I think I uh, actually, I mentioned in a few interviews, but the sandwich that I was really, really looking forward to, especially in Russia when I was, I was stuck there for a long time. So I was just really looking forward to some food I, I was used to and I recognized. Mm -hmm. So I had that. And then it was just really nice seeing, going home and just you know, being in my the room again and seeing the cats again i would like to think they recognized me but i'm not sure um and then just finally it, it feels very weird because it feels like i never left in a way it feels like my life kind of glitched um but yeah fantastic so um how, how was the european section and yeah a green as green as says um in the comments of all the airports or runways you visited what was the most difficult uh, so there were a few I think I can think of now. Actually, I'll, I'll mention three. So the first one was probably was actually in the Caribbean islands. I actually had to wait. I had to orbit a few times waiting for a rain shower to kind of pass through. Mm -hmm. And and then I, I was able to land and that was fine. It was a bit bumpy, but no problem. The second one was Ayan. So that was in Russia because it was really interesting. I was... That was my biggest sort of alternate. I felt I had kind of I had prepared for it, but again, it, it, you, can, you know, the best way is kind of to actually be there in person and see it. And it was kind of in between two valleys. Oh, sorry, it was in a valley, so between two hills, and it was like it went from straight from the coast straight onto the runway. So it was kind of it was it was probably one of the most interesting approaches i've done and again in the distance it was mountains again so i was like i really don't want to have to get around on this one but that ended up being fine it was also quite a short gravel runway and uh, that was the first time i had to land on a gravel runway in a while and the last one was dubai so that was after from mumbai to dubai that was eight hours i was really really tired by that point and then actually there was a thunderstorm over Dubai, the first one in apparently about two years. So I was really unlucky. And the wind was 40, gusting 45 knots, perfect crosswind. So I couldn't do that. So I had to divert. And, uh, and by the time I actually landed, it was probably about 27 knots, but kind of 
like runway heading, so I wasn't too worried about that. Brilliant. Um, so Europe, how how was that compared to you know you've flown around some really remote and you know difficult parts of the world? How was Europe in comparison? I quite l liked Europe because there were a ton of alternate strands, so that was nice, and I was always in radio contact, so that was great. Although that was probably the first time I had to deal with terrain. So normally I'm flying along the coast, so it's super easy to be, you know, if you have to be at 500, 600 feet above ground level, like, I mean, you know, above the sea or whatever, uh, that was really easy. Europe was the first time dealing with mountains, kind of, and hills mostly. So a lot of the time I was actually going along valleys and following the valleys down because the cloud base was quite low. But I was I was always comfortable. I was always happy with it. And even if I wasn't, there were a ton of alternates, so I was I was really relaxed. It was challenging, uh, 100%, but compared to Russia and some other places, it was okay. Yeah, and you got stuck for a while in Greece, didn't you? Was that frustrating, or were you kind of, you know, were you still enjoying the whole journey? I was, I was definitely enjoying the whole thing. It was weird because, I mean, even the day before I got home, it was still, I still felt like I was months away from home so when i was stuck in greece it was like oh this is just you know i'm so far away from home still and uh, because the whole time when i was in alaska and russia the end date kept on being pushed back and back and back to the point where that the day the day when i arrived home became really blurry and it got to a point where i almost didn't believe i would ever get home because every time something happened so that it would just be delayed by a week, delayed by a month, delayed by even longer. So even when I was in Greece, it was like, yeah, I'm supposed to be home in a week, but it did not feel that way at all. And then I did ultimately take off and it was quite amusing because the shark is a very light aircraft. So when I took off, it was about 20 knots headwind. Um, and it just popped up straight up and uh, it was quite a lot of fun. And then ultimately got to Bulgaria. It was a long flight because I had a really strong headwind the whole way, but it was quite fun to do. Brilliant. Um, another question from Mark Greenfield is, um, did you ever, you know, struggle with fatigue and, and staying alert on the long legs? I never did, actually. I, think that I, I was kind of maybe not expecting it, but I was worried about it before I left. And I never, mm -hmm. ever, ever struggled with that because there was always something that wasn't quite right. I wasn't rarely bored on my flights. It was either cloud based or it was... Um, maybe some poor visibility or, or turbulence, whatever it was, there was always something kind of keeping me aware and making sure that I was focused the whole time. Mm, well, now, um, Lee hit what we've got here. So how, you, how easy was the planning part uh, and avoiding and finding the correct airspace? Obviously, you had help from your dad and, and the team, you know, back in Europe, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, was there much for you to do on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. So for actual paperwork, luckily, I yeah, so I had my dad and other people helping with that. For the flying, airspace-wise, it's really easy. Other than Europe, uh, Europe is there's a ton of airspace there. <laughs> but literally, the US, Asia, it was so easy. I loved it. You can basically fly wherever you want. The Middle East is probably the only exception because there were a lot of military areas. But again, it was just kind of do whatever you want to do. And uh, and I, yeah, I loved flying through Asia because you know, the only time you really go through airspace is when you're landing at the airfield. So you just have that approach. And it was it was very easy. Europe, uh, Europe was fine as well. I was just talking on the radio the whole time, asking for transit. And um, and they were, I was quite low. So they were usually like, yeah, just do whatever you need to do. Yeah. And when you were on the ground, you were doing you were doing quite a bit of PR stuff, weren't you? You were doing school visits and that kind of thing. How were you doing that at every stop along the way? It really depended on COVID. So some countries were quite relaxed, and then I could go meet people and kind of say hello and things like that. Other countries, not at all. So Taiwan, for example, I went straight from the hotel, uh, from, sorry, from the airport to the hotel back to the airport. I chose, I chose not to meet too many people because obviously, if I get COVID, well, that's a risk for myself, but also for others. And so I, I chose to kind of not visit touristy places. I flew over a school in Taiwan, actually, which was really cool. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. But other, I, I met a few kids here and there. I never actually met a whole school because, again, it was just it was a 
pretty big COVID risk. And especially when once Omicron kind of became a thing, it was that wasn't really an option. Yeah. Bro, well, right. I'm just looking through um quick one from Russ Stein. What was the range with the with the ferry tank that you had in the back? So if the ferry tank was a turtle turtle pack ferry tank, if that was completely full, I had about 12, 13 hours. But because of CG limits, I couldn't quite fill it. So the max was about 50 liters. And that gave me about 10, 10, 11 hours. And that was plenty. So that, I mean, obviously I never flew 10, 11 hours. So that was great. Yeah, good. <clears throat> and then Paul Cadell, who's also a keen Sorry. Like, oh, Stuart. Rowe. Sorry, snuck in a quick one there. <laughs> don't worry yeah ah, this is a really good question are you, are you going to do a uk tour in the shark i'd love to so actually the shark i'm about to fly the shark back uh to slovakia on monday just to do some proper maintenance and make sure so they did a lot before i headed to belgium but now it's going to spend a week in slovakia just to make sure that just to kind of fix absolutely everything and then i'd love to i, I will actually fly to the uk i'll definitely fly back to popham which is right where i did a lot of my training and uh, yeah, I think that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. Mm, good. And I also saw your your um, the schedule on your website is still being updated, isn't it? With where you're going. Right. You're... Um, yeah, I'm doing a few like speaking stuff, a lot of speaking stuff. So I'm looking forward to that as well. I'm just kind of talking to people about my experiences. Yeah, we we noticed you were going to Henstridge in a few days. Is that fl flying in in a different aircraft? Or I am. So this is actually with my dad. This uh, I'll be flying to. So I flew into Popham uh, today, <laughs> and then on Sunday I'll be in Henstridge and kind of stopping there briefly before heading back to to Belgium. Oh, good, excellent. Well, we'll keep an eye on the schedule. Um, right back to Paul Cadell, who is a massive microiter. Um, where was the worst turbulence? <laughs> The worst turbulence was in, I remember this pretty clearly, Alaska and Bulgaria. So Alaska, so I had it quite often. So my plane has um, a G-force warnings. So I think it's once it passes 2.5 Gs, the, the warnings go off. I had that a lot, actually, I had, especially in, uh, in Alaska. I had a ton. Colombia had a lot as well. Mexico, sort of the desert area in Mexico and the US. And in Bulgaria, it got really bad. That day, the wind was quite strong. And as I was approaching the mountains, it, it got really, really bad. Uh, thankfully, once I kind of went over the... Yeah, once I, I was following the valleys. Once I actually got into the valley, it was a lot better. So then I wasn't too worried about it. But yeah, so then it was like going up and down a huge amount. But, uh, but it was fine. Real. Now, of all the places that you've flown around, um, if you could go back and fly around somewhere else, where, you know, where, where would it be? And I was going to say, where would it be and why would it be America? But it might not be America. So, go on, tell <laughs> Actually, us. no, I don't think. Well, no, I really, really liked flying in Saudi Arabia. I absolutely loved it. Partly because there's no weather, <laughs> there's no cloud at all, and the visibility is, is amazing. But also, it was actually really interesting. I would see that's pretty the only the only animal I saw from the air were the camels in Saudi Arabia. Mm. And and it was really beautiful as well. It was quite remote, so if the engine quits, I do have a problem. But but it was just really beautiful. The air was super smooth and there was great scenery around. So I could really kind of enjoy that was probably the flight I enjoyed the most. Yeah. Brilliant. Um now you've mentioned before, even before you started the journey that you're ambition is you're going to go and study engineering aren't you mm -hmm. do you have any kind of general aviation aspirations are you going to get any other ratings or fly any different types of aircraft yeah i'm actually going to get my commercial and my instrument rating very soon so i'm really excited about that oh, brilliant good we have to keep us up to date on that um so jane <laughs> says as a female were you treated any different in saudi that's really interesting so i i wasn't at all I, people were really really kind when i was there I went to see a women's university and it was very interesting to see the cultural difference, I think. So, especially with the headscarf. So I was not required. I was, it was okay for me to let my hair down. Uh, but it was really interesting so to go to, it was a beautiful women's university and seeing how they had uh, only women's zones. And so I was allowed to obviously go in there and then, and then it was great being able to, to talk to them and, and everyone, everyone I met was really, really kind. I think that 
they have a 20, I believe it's called a 2030 vision where they are heavily pushing towards gender equality. Obviously, it is slower <laughs> in Saudi Arabia compared to other countries. I think they just recently allowed female driving instructors, but they are making steps towards gender equality. And, and I think it's important to recognize that. And, and yeah, and it, everyone I met that was ex extremely respectful. Brilliant. Um, now, I've just missed one. Where's it gone? Mikey, he says, do you like having a rest from flying or are you, <laughs> do you want to get back into it? It's a bit of both. So some flights I loved because I loved the adventure of it. Other times, you know, it was quite scary. So it's a bit of both. I I am really looking forward to to flying to Slovakia on Monday. I think that would be really cool. I'm hoping that the weather is good. Uh, but if the weather is good, I think that would be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I definitely want to go back into that. Here's, here's a... Have a look at that. I'm not sure who the senior aviators were. Probably a bunch I actually, of I haven't people. seen that comment. Sorry, let me just read it so I don't know. Can you read it? Or? Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I will admit, I, it probably is, you know, I'm 19 years old flying around the world. It's not the most responsible thing on the planet or the safe thing, but it is supposed to be an adventure. It is supposed, there is supposed to be some sort of risk to it. Otherwise, I mean, it's not an adventure, is it? And I had, you know, I feel with my dad, uh, luckily, I had a lot of luck with that, with ferry flying. And sure, I mean, reckless, or whatever you want to call it. I think flying in a in a gyro around the world is pretty dangerous as well. But it, it's a bit of an adventure. And I had accepted that before I left. I knew it was a dangerous thing to do. And it was like, well, you know, I'm accepting the risk. And this is something I want to do. And yeah. yeah. As, as someone points out, reckless is doing things without thought, and your flight is obviously yeah. not reckless. right. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, I trust me, I put off thought into it, especially in Russia. I mean, exactly. I spent a month in Alaska in Russia because I was not happy with the weather. So yeah. I'd like to think that I, I made these the safest decisions. And, and sometimes you wonder whether there's people out there who who like to who like to give their opinions and probably criticize, and you go. So tell me, tell me about your achievements. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> tell me about world? your fights around the world. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, um, it's, it, I understand kind of that it, it was, a, obviously there is a risk associated with it, but I mean, every adventure has some risk to it. Yeah. Would you ever do anything like this again in the future? Not necessarily flying around the world, but would you ever try and undertake some kind of record break again? Uh, maybe not a world record. I never really did this to break the world record for me. It was about just kind of doing something crazy. And then once the media attention grew, it was like, okay, well, I can actually use this to get more girls into aviation. I won't fly around the world again. <laughs> um, but I'd love to, I'd, I mean, yeah, I really kind of want, I want to keep doing crazy things. I, that's kind of what I like to do. I, I've only got one life. And if I can, I'd like to make the most of it. Mm. Absolutely. Right, Cloud Hopper says, wonderfully humble. So, when is your book due out? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 it's in progress. I'd love to get, I'd love to try and, yeah, write down my experiences. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to do that. So, I, yeah, you can follow my Instagram and Facebook and stay up to date. Yeah. Did, did you keep a diary while you were? While you were flying around? Sometimes. I think I was supposed to every day, um, but in the end, it, I was quite tired. So some, some, I remember a lot, though, and I made a lot of video logs to try and remember as much as possible. Hmm. Good way of doing it. Um, Anthony says, did you see the Northern Lights? Oh, no. So basically, I'm, I'm still annoyed by that. So <laughs> I never saw them because when they were there, there was, I had an app to notify me when they were there. When they were there, it was overcast. So uh, I was there for a month. In Russia, I was there for a month. So two months, basically, where I could have seen them. I never saw them. And then two days after I left Alaska, I got a message from someone who, who from Alaska saying, just saw the, the most beautiful lights I've ever seen in my life. I was in tears. And I was <laughs> Kidding me. This, is just, this is the most unlucky thing. But that's why I'd, I'll have to go back to Alaska and actually see them. What are you going to do for the rest of the year, Zara? 
So I'd love to keep talking to people about my experience and kind of, as long as I can, keep encouraging both girls and boys to start flying. And then the next big challenge for me will be getting a degree in engineering in, uh, in September. Do you know where you're going yet? So I'm still waiting on the results from uh, probably yeah, UK and some US universities. Do you have to have an interview? If someone says at an interview, so what did you do with your gap year then? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, for a few, I think, I think I do have interviews. Yeah. I'm, still, I'm still waiting for them, but yeah. So. <laughs> Brilliant. Good stuff. Um, so, so, uh, I'll t obviously, uh, occasionally you've talked about the fact that you want to be an astronaut. One of the commenters, Paul Wheel, says, yeah. as an astronaut, I'm sure you'll still get to fly around the world many times. <laughs> something you were obviously aiming for yeah well, actually so this is kind of an, an interesting one so i've i've heard that astronauts usually say how surprised that they're surprised how small the world is and i remember thinking like, the world is huge like it's just nonsense <laughs> and then actually now that i've kind of well, flown around it i guess it, it is surprising how small the world is and and before i left i remember thinking china is so far away taiwan singapore south korea they're so so far away they might as well be on another planet they feel like they're so far away and now it's actually i've realized actually how close they are and it's really interesting to think yeah actually you know south korea is right there it's like you know not too far away from here <laughs> and that was a, that was a weird realization almost and i think it's it's fair to say as you've flown around the world and as this as daniel says here Myself and other young pilot friends have been following your adventure day to day for months, and it's felt as felt as though we were along the adventure with you for every leg. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. when, when you landed back at Wiv Wivelgum, there was there was a little part where your brother was being interviewed, I think, for a couple of minutes. You may or may not have seen this, um, and someone was talking to him about whether he was going to do do something, and he said, "Well, I I, I wouldn't mind doing something similar." Has he spoken yeah. to you about that? He really wants to do it. Yeah, he really, really wants to do it. So, yeah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> but, yeah, he's really excited about doing something similar and maybe even beating Travis Ludlow's record. Wow. Yeah. 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 It'll be good. <laughs> I haven't thought about that. Yeah. So how many hours did you fly in total? So the whole trip was about 260 hours. Right. So it was a it got enough of my commercial license. So I really <laughs> <laughs> life hack, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the world's biggest commercial cross country flight as well. <laughs> yeah. so, do you yeah. think do you think you've met the cross country requirements for the commercial license issue? I hope so. <laughs> I actually I, I I need to I haven't really looked into so the whole time was I was really focused on this. I haven't really looked into what I need to do to, to, to get my commercial license. Yeah, that's something I'll I'll focus on there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and and do you know how many hours you've flown this year in total? This you mean twenty twenty two? Yes. Oh, uh, so I I need to check. So I think I was in Mumbai. Uh, maybe. Oh, I have no idea. I I would guess around thirty hours, but honestly, I have no clue. Yeah, I think I think your dad said it was around about thirty ish. So um, yeah. I think since M Mumbai, it's a, yeah. Although it could be more, yeah, around 30, I think, is a fair yeah. guess. Yeah, well, before we wrap up, I'll because I know you've got to leave any minute, I'll hand over to Ian now. So, um, Zara, just a couple of quick comments on here. Um, someone asked how many hours you had before you left, which I think was 150, was it? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, I again, I need to try and calculate them all together now, but yeah. yeah. So you've nearly trebled your flight time, which is which is pretty amazing. <laughs> um, anyway, so in, at Flyer, we've been running this project uh, for for 2022, which is which is called Flyer 2022 in in 2022. So the idea is that we try and inspire as many people and get as many people to do some interesting things in 2022 minutes, if you like, which is kind of 30, just under 35 hours, which is kind of thing that that many people will fly in an entire year. Most people don't fly around the world like you. Um, however, uh, in recognition of your amazing achievement, we would like to award you the very first Fly 2022 Supreme Achievement Award. So you are the oh. first winner of that award in the whole <laughs> history of the, the magazine. <laughs> so at some stage during the year, we'll, we'll find a way of getting together and actually present you the real physical award. 
Thank and you so, so much. Congr- yeah, congratulations on that. Zara. Thank you very much. And, uh, that's very kind. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Thank you very much. You're inspiring an awful lot of people. And someone else helpfully put up the, the uh, Mark Saunders, the, um, mm. the commercial license. You have to do a 300 nautical mile cross country, but I think it needs to include two stops as well. So that might be interesting. Ah. Okay. Huh. Although isn't it is an overnight is an overnight pause allowed? I, <laughs> you know, I, I can't remember. It'll be something mad that you know you know, it wouldn't surprise me if they look at all your flights and go, Well, okay, so you, you clearly know what you're doing, but it, it doesn't say that in the rules, so you, <laughs> you go, do another one. Yeah, you know, no, I'm really looking forward to getting my commercial license and then I can start ferry flying uh, and that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's that's, that's why I'm getting my commercial license. You've got a degree to do as well, Zara. You know. Yeah, that too, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, apparently, Eugene says it has to be done in a day. So there you go. You're going to need your 300 nautical miles and a couple of stops in a day. So That's kind of funny, actually. So, yeah, so I haven't, I, I need to do that, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I need to do that. I think you, I'll be okay. You... I'd like to think I'll be okay for that. I hope so. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I'd be a bit worried. Yeah. When you tour the UK, that will probably be, you can probably use that as a qualifying flight as well. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and finally, what's the chance of, of, of them just quietly giving you the shark permanently, do you think? Well, I've actually spoken to the manufacturer and I, I do have to pay full price, which is quite a lot. So, um, so I'm afraid it's, it's looking a bit unlikely. But uh, but no, I mean, I, I'm going to university, right? So I won't be able to, I don't know how often I'll be able to fly the shark. So I'm just looking forward to someone. Hopefully the next person who has it will be able to fly a lot. Well, they should at least give you the canopy with all the stickers on. So, so, That'd be cool. Know. Yeah, well, I'll just peel all the stickers off and keep them. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Send, let us know what the email of, of the people at Shark is, and we'll email them and get a campaign to make sure they give you at least the canopy, <laughs> if not the whole aeroplane, really. They did sponsor me, so maybe <laughs> we need to be a bit careful. But, yeah, thank you very much. Someone, someone yeah. said it, it's done a few miles, so you should get a discount. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to them about it, and then maybe I can get, yeah, 10% off. <laughs> Hey, you want more than that, Zara? More than that. Twenty. Yeah. Ask. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you. We we know that you're you're kind of beyond the time when when we were told that you had to leave by because apparently you have another commitment that you have to go to. Yeah. Sorry about. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um. I normally have another interview now, but they haven't contacted me. But yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's just have a very. Thank you. Before we cut you off, we'll just have a quick look here. Da, 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 da. Thank you. There you go. Thank you for coming yeah. along, Zara. Great interview, yes. well done, team. And, and uh, again, thank we'd you like much. to thank you. Absolutely. Congratulations on your award. Congratulations yeah. on your Guinness World Record. Thank you Congratulations very much. Congratulations on pretty much everything, really. So uh, mm-hmm. we look forward to catching up in person later on in the year somewhere, either in Belgium or the UK. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. That'd be amazing. Thank you. Who knows where? That'd be brilliant. Thank you very much, Zara. Thank you. Thank you, Zara. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Tremendous. <laughs> Absolutely tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've right. got to say, it's like, I'm curious, who, who, who were the boring old farts who went, oh, this is very reckless? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, part, I mean, clearly, any, you can't really, I'm sure that no journalist at the Times actually made that up. Um, and there probably are a couple of boring old crusty dinosaurs who've done next to nothing, who just what a bunch of idiots, frankly. <laughs> yeah, great achievement and attitude. And most of all, first fire 2022 winner, absolutely, yep. absolutely, yep. absolutely. Yeah, now that, that doesn't mean there will be there will be more awards throughout the year, and it doesn't mean that you have to fly around the world to get an award. Um, but obviously, clearly, that was just an absolutely astonishing uh, mm. uh, achievement. And, and to have flown the 2022 in, it's not even the end of January, is it? I mean, mm. amazing, absolutely and, amazing. And not, not only asto- an, an astonishing achievement, but Zara is just, throughout, she's just been a, a model of just modesty and you know, just cool, calm collectedness. Mm. And it's, it's, well, you know, lots of people are critical of young people nowadays, but... My God, what a what a flag flyer for the young generation. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
Absolutely right. I'm not sure how I'm not sure how we follow that really, or or even if we can follow it. But um, we kind of rearranged it because Zara had something else to do at, at eight o'clock, um, and so we pushed Zara in front of the news willingly, as it were. So I yeah. suppose we need to get to the news. We can Dave. Do the news. I'm, it's, you know, it's not like flying around the world, but there is a new issue out, isn't there, Dave? Yes, yes, there is a new issue. Um, it came out last week. Uh, we've talked about the cover story before, which is the Rolls-Royce Electroflight Spirit of Innovation flight flights. When it uh, uh, cracked two rail records, they've been confirmed by the FAI. So anyway, if you've not read this story, you really ought to go and read it because it's, it's a great piece. Also in the issue, we had the launch of Fly 2022 with a whole bunch of ideas about uh, how to, how to uh, try and get to that figure. Um, what a contribution from people in the Flyer Forum as well. And we have set up a dedicated forum uh, thread, thread, that's what it's called, isn't it? Um, a dedicated forum thread to cope, to cope with Fly 22. Oh, you can tell I don't do these things very often, <laughs> forums and posts and threads. Anyway. Computers and stuff like that, Dave. I'm carrying on, <laughs> carrying on. The flying adventure of this issue is uh, a flexwing microlite flying over Kent. Jeff Hall of the Kent Microlite Club proves that a flexwing microlite is the ultimate camera ship because um, you can take fantastic photographs from it. No bits of aeroplane getting in the way. Um, in Top Gear, uh, Ed takes a look at the quad lock, a new way of holding uh, a device such as a mobile phone so you can look at Sky Demon and know where you are. Well, Instant Expert, I don't think we mentioned this last week, but Instant Expert looks at converting an FAA IR to a UK CAA IR. We know somebody who's going to have to do that, so um, that's a good issue. Plus, of course, all the usual suspects, uh, Mr. Seeger, Mark Hales, Mark, Matt Dearden, the pilot careers section, the Flyer Club member pages, and always a good read, the safety analysis and reports from Steve Ayres. Mm. And I think we have a link to the issue which uh, should be appearing soon, <laughs> he says, trying to. Says, I, I have it. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> still listening to find something that um, you'll soon see, uh, only because it came up in the comments. Um, I tell you what, I'll flash it up. Because um, Dave White said, um, how about the photo of the spirit of innovation and mm. the Rolls-Royce Spitfire, yeah. which was released when they ratified the record. I mean, isn't this a just stunning photo? Uh, shot mm -hmm. by John, John Dibbs for Rolls-Royce. Uh, and it's just a, lo a load of people I know have seen this and just gone, isn't this amazing? Sorry, it's not sized right, but I've just been to find it to chuck it up there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there we go. It's a, Obviously, last week we had um, we had favourite Rolls-Royce engine, you know, from the Piston era. And there we go. Rolls-Royce's electric speed record breaker. So, and there's, so a, just there's a link in the comments coming up. Actually, just one quick thing on what you said there, Dave. You said that it proved that a flexwing microlite was a, was was the perfect camera ship. I did once upon a time take a bunch of pictures from a flexwing microlite, and it's a complete pain in the backside camera ship. You you, you kind of lift your visor and put your. By the time you got your eyepiece to your to your eye, your eyes are streaming with a kind of seventy mile an hour wind blowing in them, and rah, rah, never again. Anyway, next story. There's a new aeroplane out. Hey, look! It's the uh, Pippis. Let me let me just mine that banner for a minute. There you go. Is that the, it's the, is that the Pipistrelle beige? <laughs> it's the Pipistrelle beige explorer. We thought we thought that the Pipistrelle beige explorer had basically renamed itself as an explorer rather than the Pipistrelle virus, which is what it's really called, virus one twenty one. Um, because you know who wants to who, who wants to go and buy a virus in these days? But actually, no. It's 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 now called the virus SW for short wing twelve A one twenty one A. Sorry, Explorer. So uh, and and then they they clearly dug up some nineteen seventies brown and beige paint from the back of the hangar and thought that it was a good idea to paint it beige. So if beige is your colour, perhaps you should be flying a Piper Apache or something instead. I don't know. Yeah. Um, maybe they do it in more modern, better colours. But it's kind of like fully equipped, uh, except. I can't find out how much it is anywhere, so who knows? Uh, in, the, in the classic mm. tradition of aeroplane manufacturers, we won't tell you how much it is. I know they're all very <laughs> coy about that, aren't they? Yes. Um, anyway, next story is about uh, Johnny. What's it about? The next story, it's another round the world flight. So, um, yeah, two Swiss pilots are uh, they're a quarter of the way through the journey at the moment, they're flying around the world on a green mission in a diamond DA50RG. 
Uh, this is a Jet A burning version. Robert Wenger and Matthias Nederhauser. Um, so they're basically hoping to achieve net zero emissions uh, through green initiatives, apparently, and technologies making use of sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, they departed Zurich on the 2nd of January. Um, and they're you know visiting lots of places around the world, flying mostly IFR. Um, so very different kettle of fish to what Zara had been uh, putting up with. Um, but yeah, apparently since since their departure, they've called in at the um, Diamond Factory. They've dropped in the, the um, United Arab, Arab Emirates and in India, and they're basically connecting up lots of different sustainable projects throughout the world so and, and what they decided they said what we really need is a photo of us wearing two brand new day glow jackets <laughs> well a they're swiss and we know that swiss people always obey the rules and b yes. they're standing on a wing so it's quite high i'm surprised they didn't have hard hats on as well to be honest. <laughs> and a restraint system <laughs> and and i don't i don't know i i'm i'm struggling to be I don't, I don't want to put a downer on it, but you know, carbon neutral thing by flying around the world. Just, just don't fly around yeah. the world. Yeah. Mm. I mean, just fly, if you want to fly around the world, fly around the world. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Have fun. But there you go. That's that's just for me. Um, Ed, something a bit funky for you. Not flying around the world, but enabling you to drive up to your home and then turn around and drive off and, you know, not worry about the problem of owning a car and an aeroplane you can have this but you've been going well i don't want anything that's not certified well good news slovakia has certified its own homegrown klein air car uh, the cva which is effective in slovakia only follows 70 hours of flight testing including 200 takeoffs and landings so um so it's good news. So if you've been waiting for a 140 horsepower, 1,000 kilogram <laughs> car that also turns into an aeroplane, it's like if you watch the video, if you've ever seen the film Transformers, it's like watching an old arthritic transformer transform. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it is it's a stunning achievement because you know you've, we've all been going how do we how do we make a car fly and um, and the guys at Klein have gone. Here it is. Um, Here but yeah, it's a, if you want exciting fast change, just watch it on fast forward. Otherwise, it's a bit slow. But it is amazing. Um, so presumably, you can fly to the border of Slovakia, at which point you have to land and can then maybe drive overseas and a bit further? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you could, you, could, you could make your round-the-world flight in your, in your Klein Air car, but just stop at Slovakia's border and turn it into a drive. That's a round-the-world so drive. So that's so long as it would be new regs for driving on the road. It would, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe um, only kind of working, um, working on a 300 horsepower engine for it. Uh, and uh, that uh, the 300 horsepower powered model will be put forward for EASA certifi type certification in about 12 months, they say. Yeah. So, so there we go. Good. Yeah. All right. Quick story about um, oh, we've got Egnos Ag coming up next. This must be you, Dave. Yes, this isn't actually on the website uh, news pages yet because we're still figuring out a few things. But there's been a debate in the House of Lords about Egnos. It was prompted by one peer getting stuck in the silly aisles because Paul Weather meant the aircraft to get taken back couldn't fly. So he introduced, he, he, he uh, hijacked uh, a debate in the House of Lords to talk about this. He did have some sensible arguments, apart from the fact he couldn't get back from the silly aisles. But he concentrated on the safety of life argument, which is what EGNOS, um, through its um, a, you know, ability to give you a precise uh, GPS approach, um, it, uh, so he concentrated on the safety of life argument and also how remote communities, such as the Scottish islands, relied on the air service, particularly during winter, when it may be too rough to, to take a boat across. So the air, you know, the air service is vital to them. So what this has done is revitalize the argument about EGNOS. Um, it also came somewhere along the line, the cost of actually staying in EGNOS, uh, which the British government, UK government refused, decided not to pay. But the cost was revealed as 30 million quid, which is a sizable sum, but probably nothing like the sum required to create an alternative to EGNOS. So, uh, and the time it would take to make it happen. So the debate over should we go back into Egnos? Has been reignited, and let's hope it goes somewhere. Yeah, because the reason we didn't stay in it, I'm not sure it was a 30 million quid. I think it was just incompetence. But, so, 
So maybe 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 there's maybe there's a fresh breakout of competence in, in oh hang on a second. No, maybe not. You could be digging okay. a very big hole for yourself here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, let's let's move on to something. Yes. Oh, God, that whole eggnog thing. What a complete and utter bunch of idiots we were. Yeah. Um, there you go. Uh, moving on. Who wants to talk yeah. about this? This is you, Ed. Uh, uh, no, it's Johnny. Johnny no, it's, it's, it's me. Talk Johnny, about ground really, really interesting picture of a computer. Yeah, look at that. Fan fascinating. So yeah, basically the um, the the Enough big dogs in the in the uh, commercial theory uh, game are now in the PPL theory game. Bristol Ground School and now have a PPL question bank. Um, so you can sign up for a pretty decent uh, decent fee each month. Um, you get access to all their equipment online and you know go through different questions, question bank, and then not not only, it's not just a case of you know answering a few questions and finding out if you've got them wrong or not. They'll actually explain all the answers and explain the correct workings out and all that kind of thing. It's a really good system. And the questions are suitable for EASA and UKCA PPL exams and you just get your BGS online subscription um, and then you can revise by the subject topics or go through um, questions by keyword that kind of thing and it gives you a better understanding of each subject apparently and um, yeah it's just a new way of new way of practicing really which you know hasn't been around before. No it's about, I think it's about 10 quid a month and you probably only need a couple of months mm. to crack your way yeah. through most of the exams don't mm. you so so, you know, and, and BGS have got a great uh, reputation in the commercial world. So, so yeah. there you go. Um, Ed. Me. So this is uh, Mojave Airport news. Um, so Mojave, which is Mojave Air and Space Port in California, has renamed or added to their name to be um, at Rutan Field. And this is honor of uh, Bert and Dick Rutan, two of the most famous, uh, well, Bert a designer and Dick as test pilot. Um, uh, famous in their field and obviously may have made Mojave their home for so long. Um, but um, it's basically the Rutans moved to Mojave 50 years ago when it was a small little known general aviation uh, airport and obviously now it's an air and space port. Um, and this um, renaming move recognises first flights of more than uh, 60 unique experimental aircraft um, and the um, uh, the directors of Mojave noted that during one 20 year period, there was an average of a first flight of a new manned aircraft every eight and a half months, which is amazing. So, mm. and obviously, Rutan Aircraft Factory and Scaled Composites, mm. um, uh, both companies uh, for Rutan, uh, have employed, employed thousands of individuals and um, given a flight to numerous dreams um, of, over many, many years. So, um, congratulations to Rutan's on that. Mm. As, as it's a spaceport, do you think yep. it's going to win with Nuki? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think, isn't, isn't Nuki supposed to be the centre of the UK space industry coming up or something? I think they're I think, supposed yeah. to be test, test launching one of the rockets from the 747 later this year. From ah, Nuki. the Virgin Orbit. Mm. Mm. Are, they going, are, they, are, they, are they attaching Richard Branson to that one? <laughs> No, but here, here's here's something which I'm sure he'd get if he could. Dave. Well, right. Get yes. Dave, get the next story. That would kind of spell <laughs> me. Right. <laughs> so I'll give you a clue. Yes. Jetpack Aviation. Um they uh this is Ameri this is the American Jetpack Aviation, the sort of Iron Man suit. This is and the new JB12 jetpack. Um it's a uh, six engine, six engines on this thing. It's a real brute, but apparently it's got revised control and stability system. And if they've managed to get their first military customer, uh, an unlamed uh, military force in Southeast Asia, I'll come back to that in a second, has bought two of these things for $400,000 each. Um, they're going to start training the pilots. The pilots apparently uh, who are going to be flying these things are not pilots at the moment. They've had no experience of flying. It's completely new to them, um, so they're going to be. Uh, they're going to start with being tethered. I I wrote so if they can't shoot off and uh, injure other people, um, once they've got to a basic level of control, they'll be untethered over water. So if they get it all wrong, they just splash down. Uh, and once they've actually got a level of competence, they will then start their special ops training, um, because uh, these two th these two units are going to be used for. We kind of think they're going to be used for kind of black ops, 
you know, behind lines and all that kind of thing. Now, cool. my guess, although uh, although uh, Jack Packer very carefully not naming which military force, my guess is that it's South Korea because the US has pretty strong military links with South Korea. And I can't think of anybody else in Southeast Asia they would like to let this technology go to. So, and it could be crazy though, but you know, black ops all about surprise and speed and quietness. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that a suit where you've got loads of jet engines, little jet engines running at like a gazillion RPM and have an endurance of like five minutes. <laughs> that's, that's not, it's, it, it'll be like, can it, it, there'll be someone on the ground going, can you hear that? And they'll go, oh, look at that. And someone will go, bang. And it's like, boom. <laughs> well, I guess they've identified a, an issue they can solve with it. I don't I, know what it I'm is. I'm wondering whether there's a there's a for, there's a foreign air force at the moment where someone is watching the live stream and they're going, I'd heard we were going to buy those, and they're going, well, maybe I'll get a job delivering for Deliveroo or something instead, just in case I get selected for that program. That's what they're going to be used for ultimately, isn't it? For yeah, Deliveroo. actually, it's, 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 that's what it's it'll be. It'll be it's Deliveroo. Guy turning up, at your door, pasty. Yeah. Perhaps it's called call a caller barbecue. Yeah, you, 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 they fly in. Point around at the, at the barbecue, and here you are. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. Anyway. Sorry, you've heard of flame grilled? It's like yes. a flame, 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 flame grilled, flame grilled whopper. Uh, right, mm -hmm. another story of an astounding amount of money. Boeing have just paid four hundred eighty million dollars, so nearly half a million dollars uh, invested in um, Whisk. Whisk and Whisk uh, have this airplane called the Cora. Uh, there you go. It's uh, gets airborne by using its 12 independent electric engines it's got one electric engine at the back and it transitions to wingborne flight uh whisk was formed by larry page so the whole google money boeing money must have yeah. huge 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 amounts of money uh, it's going to be completely autonomous because uh, as they say on their website we want to get rid of the most common cause of accidents the pilot so we're not going to have one um every time there's a fault with any of the rotors the others can take over uh, and I, I think the thing i do quite like about it is actually they're, they're pretty honest on the website they go range 25 miles yeah which sounds achievable mm. it's so much better than those sites where you go oh look here's a web drawing of an ev toll range a thousand miles speed <laughs> 300 knots yes. payload a thousand kilos That's cost it. 52 pence yes. you just know that's bollocks um but this one seems uh well a seems to have a huge amount of money behind it um and b seems to have slightly more realistic games so there yeah, you go. they've been working um, on it for a long time they're, they're one of these companies a bit like joby that started off and they did they did a whole bunch of stuff and didn't talk about it for years so yeah no absolutely so talking about free money which 480 million from free, Boeing, free money free smaller amounts but much more practically usable for a mm. bunch of people um uh, so free flying news um there's a number of honorable company of air pilots private pilots license scholarships available the th closing date though is coming soon and that's the 2nd of february at 12 noon uh, candidates must be 17 or over on the 1st of june 2022 uh, and you, the, if you win the course must be commenced ju um, during june 2022 and completed by 29th of september 2022 i've put a link in the comments because if you know someone who wants some free flying and could be eligible, it's worth referring that. Um, also, while I was prepping that news story, um, there's been a bunch of talk about the Royal Aero Club bursaries um, covering a range of air sports. Uh, applicants for these grants must hold uh, British citizenship and be permanently resident in the UK aged 14 to 21. Um, there were 27 bursaries uh, available last year uh, and a whole bunch this year. So again, free, free flying and good motivation is useful to everyone so if you know someone who's young and could use the money to help their flying send them those links and in other non-mentioned news somewhere that I, that I i noticed in my email box earlier this week from hcap the honorable company of air pilots see that prince andrew or whatever we're supposed to call him now he's no longer the whatever they call it grand master big wings or something of there he's come mm -hmm. slightly silently glided away from that one so there you go just there in case go. you're interested so yep. on that basis, it must be time for... Yeah. So, 
Following on from the news that Mojave Air and Spaceport in California has now added Rutan Field to its full name, we thought, hey, let's pick our favorite Rutan design for our fancy hangar. There's lots to choose from, so who's first? Me. Ian. So, I, 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 as many people know, I'm a bit of a fan of touring and stuff like that, so I went for the boomerang. It's a, it's a twin mm. designed around Beach Baron, the B-58 kind of... Uh, B-58 market, although it's not quite a B-58. One pilot, four passengers, uh, two engines, clearly. Interestingly, the engines are a different horsepower. One's 200, one's 210 horsepower. And the idea is that you, you don't really suffer from uh, the same asymmetric problems that you would get in, in a normal twin. So this one uh, will cruise uh, somewhere north of 200 knots and has a range of about 2,000 nautical miles. Obviously, you can play with those a little bit. I think only one was built. There was... Um, there was, wasn't it the tomorrow? The people from the GPS manufacturers. Do you remember? Yes. Mor it was. It was, was going to be. Um, someone bought the rights to it, didn't they? And they were planning on producing it. And it, then it was, was going to be piston, and then it was going to be turbine, yeah. and then it vanished. And then it was going to be nothing. So I think I'm right in saying there's just one of these flying. There um, is. There is just know. one flying, um, and it's. Uh, it was. It was flying for a while, and then it was uh, Rutan. Bert Rutan retired it, and then he. Um, one of the junior guys at Scale Composites, one of the, the um, one of the workers there. Uh, they. I think they, they did this with the um, the boomerang and the catbird. Um, Rutan said, "Hey, if you know, if people are interested in getting these airplanes back airworthy, so the boomerang still flies today." So. Um, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Only in the circuit, already. mind you. Sorry, oh. only in the circuit. Well, it just—it always wants to come. Always back. has to go back. <laughs> but yeah, boom, I'm boomerang was just quite a, just an, an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah, Johnny, it's your turn next. Yeah, I've gone for the only practical one, in my opinion. I've gone for the Grizzly, which is also not the prettiest. And this is really of, of all the photos. This is the one that would show the landing gear and the um the wings best so it's basically powered by 180 horsepower lycoming um with a hartzell constant constant speed prop it's got four seats all composite airframe and it stalls at less than 40 knots um, it did actually go into kind of operational work use it was used as a tug um for one of the scale composites gliders um, and it lives on today at um, EAA Air Venture. Uh, but it had an empty weight of just under 1,500 pounds and a gross weight of 2,500. And it was meant to be a kind of proof of concept canard tandem wing stole aeroplane with potential for amphibious use. Um, but there are, there are lots of comments and questions about when the flaps are fully down, you've been banging into bushes and rocks and all that kind of thing. So yeah but there's a i have seen photos of that with the flap it had big slotted flaps on front and rear wings and mm. it's it, it does look like the proverbial barn door when it's mm. <laughs> when all that's hanging out but yeah not a looker no very practical and apparently you can sleep in it as well yes you can Two yeah. what is this this thing about bloody sleeping, be sleeping in airplanes. <laughs> so there's a there was a few designers who got this thing about oh you can sleep in an airplane. Well, who wants to sleep in a freaking airplane? It's a bit like Ivan Shaw and his automatically folding electric wings. I mean, really, how many people really really want that? If, if I know automatically folding it, wings quite useful, but but sleeping and, and invariably it's always in a in a tailwheel airplane. So it's like yeah no, I'd really like to sleep on a slope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you get one of those things like leveling caravans out. Anyway, Dave. Right. Okay. Well, I've chosen um, the a, a pretty a, a, an aircraft that did actually make it into production, sort of. It's the Beach Starship. Um, it uh, is intended originally to replace Beach's King Air. Uh, we can see that you can tell that it didn't work because the Beach King Air is still going and a very nice aeroplane. But the, uh, the Starship was certified in 1988. Production only lasted until 1995. It had several firsts. It was the first all-composite business aircraft. The first certificated general aviation aircraft with an all-glass cockpit and an integrated flight management system. It was a touch expensive by the time it went on sale. <laughs> uh, 3.7 million, which uh, back in you know, the uh, early 90s was a heap of money for an aeroplane. Um, 
part of the problem was during production, um, it was made out of carbon fiber, which was a new technology back then. And it ended up being much heavier than it set out, it started out uh, to be, which meant it needed bigger engines, which impacted the fuel burn and therefore the range. Um, it's both, um, so it kind of et into the uh, operational use of usefulness. <laughs> However, it looks a million dollars. Looks a bit like a uh, like a spaceship, it, so I think. Um, yes, yeah. it does look like a million dollars, Dave. But I'm going to deploy my nasal voice here and it's point a, out that you dollars. you have chosen because I could tell because the photo you had had a, had five windows, not four. You did not pick the scale <laughs> composites technology demonstrator, which was eighty five percent. You have actually picked the Beach Starship. So it's it's not a true it's it's it is derived from a Rutan design, but that isn't a Rutan airplane. But it is very beautiful. The Beach Starship was scaled up from scaled, scaled prototype. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was that was ironically one of the problems because they built this eighty-five percent scale um, proof of concept airplane, which ultimately turned out to only be good for pr 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 proving aerodynamic stuff. Actually, none of the speed or the payload or airframe technology stuff worked out. So hmm. Darren Lewington says, well, Mark Greenfield <laughs> says, oh, my God. And Darren Lewington says, Ed needs to get out more. <laughs> Ed, what's your choice? Sorry? What's my choice? Well, what are you going to win with? I've got to say that, I, and this uh, this adds to my nerdiness. I'll, I'll declare that when I was a when I was a, a, a 12, 13 year old, I had a I had a poster of the Starship up on my wall when all of my contemporaries probably had, you know, favorite favorite people from TV and the like. But I was that sad, and I do think Dave, that is probably the the most beautiful choice. Um, I would have picked. Someone's picked up on it. Um, someone said Ed, Ed's going to come in with the pond surely I did pick the pond racer when we had favorite automotive engine powered um, designs and the pond racer is fantastic however I figured that I would go for this so my choice is isn't one of Rutan's most beautiful designs but it does represent probably one of his most utterly brilliant achievements. I give you Spaceship One. Yes, the Rutan design that saw an experimental aircraft go into space, and not just into space once, but several times. And it did it so many times, and in a time frame um, specifically for a competition, that it won the 10 million pound Anzari X prize in the process. Um, and it was the first, uh, Spaceship One was the first privately built craft to achieve supersonic flight. Um, and interestingly, it had a 16, so it weighed about 7,000 pounds, I think. It had a 16,500 um, pounds of thrust rocket motor that once you lit it, you couldn't stop it. So <laughs> um, so carried aloft by um, by a, a carrier aircraft, also designed by uh, Rutan, which equally weird looking, uh, called the White Knight. Anyway, Spaceship One uh, flew uh, a number of times. Um, was uh, created a bunch of civilian astronauts and proved that actually, you know, the your good old home built aeroplane could make it into space. So, and uh, today that hangs in the Air and Space Museum next to the Spirit of St. Louis and uh, Chuck Yeager's X1. Hmm. So, so, what's the remind me of the name of the documentary? If you haven't seen this documentary, I think you can get it on YouTube. You should really go and watch it. It's, it's something Black Sky. Yeah, it's uh, it's it was a Horizon program from back in two thousand and three, and it's called uh, it, I think it was called Black Skies, wasn't it? So yeah, I don't like the quote, but uh, if you look at the comments, I'm I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> out in front here. <laughs> so, oh no, look at that! Oh, uh, has mm. got it. It's a genuine tie this week. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question. What's the new six engine job? Oh, yeah. Well, that's is uh, that's Rock. talking about the um, the strato launch. Well, the the strato launch, isn't it? Strato launch, which is yeah. now called the Rock mm. ROC, which is the world's largest aircraft. But I don't. That's mm. a scale composite design and not a Rutan design. Mm. So. Well, this is a good question. Does it count if it can't take off from the ground Ooh. under its own steam? Well, Nick, I'd like I I. I would guess that if you lit a 16,500 pound rocket <laughs> on a 6,000 pound aeroplane and pointed yourself down the runway, it would probably take off on its own, but would probably run out of steam before you got into space. 
<laughs> so maybe. Uh, yeah. So despite yeah. the nasal voice, technical irregularity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So rather, yeah, that's rather rather mean, isn't it? Rutan built home built is a bit like saying Picasso sketch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. There it looks you like go. Dave is the winner. Dave, you have a yeah. Dave, Dave. Dave. We'll give Dave a round of applause. Well done, Dave. No, well, I think he more than edges it on this one. I think, he, I think he basically just A cheated and B won. <laughs> <laughs> cheated. <laughs> I but just chose the airplane. It was a recipe. You chose basket cases. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you could say that. I think am amateur built spaceship, not a basket case, Dave. <laughs> no. So, um, events. We've got many, much many events happening. Sounds like Zara yeah. is going to Henstridge, but that must be a strut thing, I guess, or something else. The, I don't the know. are coming up uh, until about March. But the dates for the spring and the summer are starting to arrive in and are going on the flyer events calendar on the website as they as they come in. Good, excellent. Um, Johnny? Yeah, we've got first uh, five, we've got five webinars confirmed for the year now through um, Nigel Webb and Dave White, who is in the comments somewhere. Um, we'll be getting some uh, exact topics sorted soon. Dave's asked me to give him a few weeks because he's busy, busy man. Um, so yeah, we'll get those in the calendar and let people know what they are. Um, and also people that haven't um, meshed up their email addresses from the club and the forum, we'll be sending you another email very shortly as soon as we've worked out the people that have connected them both up correctly. Um, and the time is getting ever closer for the price to increase. So if you're not a member, join now, £7.50 a month or £30 for the year before the price goes up. Yeah, because it will be going up. And if you if you join now, you'll guarantee at least a year, probably probably 13, 14 months worth or something like that. And uh, if you can see in the ticker below, if you're watching this on YouTube, which you all are, do us a favor, leave a comment, tick like, click the bell, subscribe if you haven't done so, all that kind of good stuff. Happy to do Cheers, it. Darren. Nice okay. Jolly. Good. Thank you very much, Darren. Into that, Darren. Yeah. yeah. Darren, you're no, clear you tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. We need to talk to you about some other stuff as well, Darren, talking about it. Um, is that – are we done for this evening? We, we've we kind of bust our time again, but I think it was well worth it because we had a, a longer-than-normal interview with Zara, even though it was a little bit <gasps> – is she going to arrive at the beginning? It was getting a little bit twitchy, wasn't it? Um, well, you, can, you can guarantee that choosing to play the weather was definitely going to make her turn up because literally it's like – you hit the weather and it's like as simon was going evening everyone there she appeared i know <laughs> and there was a comment in the there was a comment in the question saying why can't you just pause simon is it's not quite as simple to pull in this software to pause a video once you've started it i mean it can be done but it's it's it risks all sorts of stuff yeah dave um, white asks an important <laughs> question with the new with the the new things on the horizon how long will it take johnny to learn the new price we have started retraining dave it began in january yeah at least a year <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool well in that case thank you very much everyone have a great weekend's flying um stay safe and we look forward to seeing you next wednesday if you're a club member if you're not why not and next thursday otherwise and uh yeah even more so thank you very much everyone mm. have a good one bye bye Cheers. bye, bye. Oh. oops finger trouble <laughs>